You all know how much I love the Air 65. In fact, I bought two of them. I really love this so much. Well, Beta FPV have sent me this, which is the Air 65 Champion Edition. And before I take this out for a flight, let's get this on the bench. I'll unbox it and you can see everything that comes with this. And I'll explain some of the differences between what these do. Sorry for the noise in the background. There's, a, there's somebody else flying here. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what you get in the box. You get a spare set of the Gemfan 1219S props. It says two blade on there, but they're definitely three blade. The S version is the lighter weight version of the normal 1219 props from Gemfan. You get the USB-C adapter, which some people don't like because it's another thing to carry with you. I don't mind this so much and I have a few of these already. You get a pack of peak screws. These save a little weight, which I'm guessing offsets the additional weight from the larger motors and AIO on this build. Uh, I'm not gonna use these for this test, but uh, just know that you can use these in place of the normal metal screws. There's a spare canopy in solid black, which I'm sure will come in very handy and here's the quad and i'm not gonna lie that looks pretty good in black i'm actually surprised at how good that looks in black i know that most of my other quads are black but for some reason i just think of tiny whoops in brightly colored plastic or translucent plastic um, so seeing it in black is quite nice so taking a look at this next to the normal Air 65, it's the same size and structure. Um, the only differences are that everything is black. The ducts are black, the screws are black, the canopy's black, the motors are black, even the glue used on the UFL antenna is black. Uh, not that the color makes a huge difference to the performance, but it's a pretty nice bit of detail that they color matched everything for this Black Friday edition product. But outside of the cosmetic differences, the motors are a higher 30,000 kV in comparison to the 23,000 kV on my freestyle version and the 27,000 kV on the race version of the normal Air 65s. I don't have one of the race versions, I prefer the freestyle version, so I'm just kind of showing that here. Looking at the website, they mention that these motors have double ball bearings, which helps to increase the efficiency. But let's see how much flight time we get with these later on when we test it. The props are Gemfan 1219S, which are a higher pitched and slightly heavier than the HQ Ultralight props on the freestyle version of the S65. And it uses the Beta FPV 5-in-1 rather than the 4-in-1 that is in all of the other Air 65 models. And you can see that here in my Air 75 that I'm fixing at the moment, hence it doesn't have a canopy on it. You can see that the 4-in-1 isn't the full diamond shape like the 5-in-1 is on this Champion Edition. This means that you don't need that separate ELRS receiver that sits on top. It's somehow heavier than the 4-in-1 AIO with that separate receiver. So if we get these on the scale and weigh these, the normal Air 65 comes in at 17 grams and the Champion Edition is showing here as one gram heavier, 18 grams. Now I'm pretty sure it's less than that. My scale just doesn't go lower than a whole gram, but that additional weight is due to the heavier motors and the five in one AIO. So if you really do want to save the weight, then use those plastic peak screws that come with the Champion Edition. So that's enough of this on the bench. Let's get this outside and see how it flies. So I'm gonna show you my very first flight and then I'll come on to showing you some of the later flights, but I wanted you to see just me getting used to this thing after flying the normal Air 65 for quite a while. And I've probably put about over a thousand packs now through the normal Air 65 and this has way more power. So you'll see me making loads of minor corrections to this as my muscle memory is kind of in tune with the normal Air 65 and I do get used to this eventually, but uh, for right now, you'll kind of see me crashing a little bit. While this is going on, as I mentioned before, I'm pretty selective on what I choose to review here. And it's usually something that I'll think I'll actually use afterwards or something that progresses my journey into FPV. And that was the original Air 65 for me. Not only did it redefine what I thought a whoop was capable of, but I also ended up flying this so much since getting it back in July, I bought a second one. I should mention the two Air 65s and the Air 75 I have weren't sent to me for free or a discount. I bought these with my own money 
so I'm happy that Beta FPV asked me if I'd be interested in being sent one of these new special champion edition version. As always, I'll be completely honest with you on my views of this and anything else that I use. No one gets to see this video before it goes live. There's no affiliate link either. So whether you choose to get one of these or not based on this video, I don't get anything in return. I just like to try these things out. But if you do want to support my channel, just hit that thumbs up and tell me what your favorite Tiny Whoop is in the comments and maybe consider subscribing as well. A lot of people use Tiny Whoops indoors as they refer to it as Tiny Whoop season. And I mean, all year round is Tiny Whoop season for some of us, but plenty of people have Tiny Whoops to fly indoors as the weather gets worse. Now, as much as I fly my Air 65 indoors, this Champion Edition is just a little bit too much for my ability to fly in my tiny apartment at the moment. So as it was a cold, dark and wet day, we went to a car park and flew around for a bit. And I've never done this before, but this for me is where the Air 65 Champion Edition made so much sense. Being in that tighter environment with enough room to pick up speed in different lines, yeah, this felt really good. It corners really nicely and I had to fly through my brother's car window just because it was there. I even gave my brother a, a go on this as well as his first Tiny Whoop experience and I think he'll probably be getting an analog module pretty soon to start flying Tiny Whoops as a result. Speaking of analog, this was the weird thing. Inside this place, the image seemed to be so much better than outside. Not really sure what's going on. I did have this issue with my other analog whoops as well over these few days. So it might be something to do with the SpeedyB module that I'm using. If you have a better recommendation for an analog module, let me know in the comments below. But as fun as this was flying around this car park, the height restriction in here kind of limited this a little bit as to what I wanted to test next. So I wanted to get this out into a much bigger open area to just see what this extra power could do outside. So getting this outside, you could instantly feel that that power was getting you further distances way, way faster than the normal Air 65. And I mean, typically if I fly too far away with the Air 65, I kind of worry about bringing it back. With this thing, it reaches those distances much quicker, although the battery doesn't last as long, and I'll come on to that in a moment. So I'm not gonna lie, when I first started using the Champion Edition, I was kind of thinking, it's nice, but I don't really like it in comparison to the Freestyle one, but getting this outside and then doing some bigger tricks made me realize exactly why this thing is so good. I could do tricks over bigger objects so much easier with this. Power loops were a breeze, and aside from me not seeing tree branches and always split essing straight into a tree, I started to enjoy this a lot more. On the same day, I was also flying my brother's Oasis Fly two and a half inch just before this, and whilst that has a lot of low end punch and tops out very quickly, the motors on the Air 65 Champion Edition felt like it was more controllable at the low end and then the power built up as you got higher up in the throttle, which allowed you to kind of launch over stuff much easier. The tune on this, like the normal Air 65, is really nicely done as well. I just felt like I didn't need to sort of change anything on here. It just comes straight out the box and you can start ripping it around. And for some reason, I don't know why I do this with Tiny Whoops, but I, for some reason, like to try and land this in people's hands just to see how accurate I can be with a Tiny Whoop. So let's just come in and, uh, no, okay, maybe not this time, but we'll give that a go later on. So I could have left it there, but I wanted to take this out into a much bigger area and fly this where I would normally fly my three, three and a half and five inch quads in a much bigger area. And this thing was still a lot of fun. I wouldn't normally fly Tiny Whoops in a massive area like this because it's so small it can't cover enough ground but the champion edition was surprisingly good at covering a lot of distance in a short period of time so that kind of opened up the area a lot more to me as well the only thing really holding this back like most tiny whoops is just the size of the battery i think i averaged around about three to three and a half minutes with the normal air 65 freestyle and with this, I'm seeing flight times of around about two minutes, and in most cases, just under two minutes. But bearing in mind that this was around 11 degrees Celsius on these days, so you might actually get a bit more. 
So although this covers a lot more ground than the original Air 65, it also has less flight time, so you just gotta make sure that you can make it back to wherever you are. And as I had the space, I thought I'd, you know, showboat a little bit with the quad. Uh, let's get a couple of orbits in as my brother's trying to swap the quad out of the air. And then he's kind of signaling to land in his hand. So, you know, let's give it another go. And yeah, boy. So I let my brother have a go of this. This is again, you know, his first experience of Tiny Whoops. And it kind of shows because straight away he went right across the field to somewhere that he would normally go with his three and a half inch quad and then promptly crashed it straight into a tree. We got this back up in the air though, and then, you know, he started having a lot of fun with this, a lot more fun than I think, you know, I thought he would have with a tiny whoop, so much so that he's actually ordered an Air 65 and an analog module off of the back of this. But uh, yeah, you can see he's kind of like trying to dive this light here which, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get up there with the normal Air 65, it is quite high up. But just before I give you some of the downsides of the Air 65 and my final thoughts, I thought I'd just let this video run a little bit because basically my brother then kind of tried to do a split S, crashed it and killed the quad by breaking the canopy. So that was the end of that for the day. But there are a couple of things that you probably should be aware of with the Champion Edition, and it's probably just my preference, but I love the loose cornering feel of the original Air 65. The Champion Edition changes direction way faster and doesn't slide around as much, which if you're a racer or used to that style, you'll probably prefer it. What I'd like to try is putting the HQ lower pitch props on this and see if that makes a slight difference. I do love the extra power, I just want it a little bit looser. The black frame looks really good, I actually love it. But when you crash, especially in grass, it makes it really difficult to find. Although it doesn't look as badass, I'd like to use this brightly colored duct on my HD Zero Air 65 as you can see it from so far away. In fact, you'll see the majority of my own builds use this fluorescent yellow TPU because when I crash it, it makes it so much easier to find. If you're just getting into tiny whoops and aren't used to flying around indoors, this might be a lot to handle. Don't let that put you off though, it's the same price as the normal Air 65, so just get this one. Change the props and add a motor output limit in beta flight of about 76% if you want the 23,000 kV of the freestyle version, or 90% if you want the 27,000 kV of the race version. Just be aware that this is slightly heavier, so it's not quite the same, but it will be close. I love that Beta FPV have done this with a special edition, and I'm waiting to see what they do next as well with the Air 65. I'm hoping that they'll do a pro version at some point. The pro versions usually come with slightly larger props and slightly larger motors, so let's see if I'm right with that prediction. And although I'm still in love with my freestyle version of the Air 65, I really enjoy testing this out, especially where I could let it loose in a much larger area. I would still recommend for anyone that flies FPV to get an Air 65, no matter which version it is. But if you're a racer or want something with extra punch or want something in black, then you know definitely give this a go. But I still love the freestyle version. Remember, there are only a thousand of these being made and I'm not using an affiliate link, so I have nothing to gain by telling you to get one. If you wanna see me convert one of these to HD0, check out this video. And if you wanna see some of my thoughts on Tiny Whoops and see me slinging and ripping around a normal Air 65 Freestyle Edition, check out this video.